Where... Where am I? First contact. In all honesty, my first couple of hours with Creepy Jar's Green Hell was a frustrating nightmare involving Glenn sniggering in the corner while I died in several unseemly ways. I pretty much knew straight away that I was going to enjoy the game as there's this strange part of me that kind of likes ridiculously difficult titles. Is it the Fair Necessities or the Jungle Crook? Let's find out. The story goes that Jake Hawkins, anthropologist, gets separated from his longtime partner in the Amazon rainforest. After taking a tumble, you'll wake up battered and bruised and completely off grid. Your partner Mia nowhere to be seen. After re-establishing communication, not only will you be on a quest for survival, but also to work out where Mia is, as she seems to be in some sort of peril. Mia? Come again? Breaking up. Engaged as she is with the local tribes. In much the same way as something like Firewatch, the vast majority of your communications happen through the radio. And thankfully, the voice actors do a good enough job to make this believable and enjoyable. At times, you'll have the option of several dialogue choices, and there are handwritten notes, documents, and newspaper clippings that you can read as you go about your adventure that flesh out the story in the world. And I really like these because they added quite a bit of factual information about the rainforest itself. In terms of the gameplay then, well, this is where the title Green Hell comes from. From the options menu, you'll have a choice of a few different modes. You've got Story, which is what we're going to focus on mainly, Survival Mode, which does exactly as you'd expect, and the Excellent Challenges Mode. Here you'll have a number of objectives based around your survival abilities, like finding and lighting a campfire within a certain number of days, catching different types of water species, and even crafting a full set of metal armour. There are four different difficulty modes. A walk in the park is pretty easy. Welcome to the jungle, king of the jungle and green hell mode. Now I've only been playing in welcome to the jungle mode, which is essentially normal difficulty. And let me tell you, I cannot imagine what green hell mode is like, but it essentially massively increases the rate at which your nutrients deplete which personally, I just don't think I'd find very fun. Normal mode keeps your sanity on, hostile tribes are on, predators are on, and your nutrient depletion is, well, normal. That's more than difficult enough for me. You control your character from a first-person perspective, and very early on, you're going to realize there's no help. There's no help coming, and it's down to you to figure everything out. You have a notebook, which as you discover new items in the world, you'll jot down recipes as well as key story information. There are several tabs within this book, which you'll need to refer to often as every plant, tree and item within the world can have a use. Unlike many survival games, you're able to craft many of the items right off the bat but learning the recipes is down to you. If it's not in your notebook, experimentation can sometimes be the best option. For example, you can build a simple axe, but with a stick, a piece of rope and two rocks, you can build a much better one. The survival here is very logical. If you find a coconut on the ground, it's likely that that tree has more fruit above you in the branches. Grab a stone, throw it and knock some more down. Smash them open with your axe and you could just eat the flesh of it and walk off or you could eat the flesh of it Keep the halves, use them as bowls to collect rainwater, or even combine the whole coconut with a rope to turn it into a drinking vessel. You'll be surprised by how, more often than not, you're able to figure out the crafting recipes just by thinking, well, what would I do? Such as turning the long sticks into a spear, or instead using it as a bow and arrow. You are given a few things to help you with your journey. First and foremost is your watch. This shows all of your statistics, as well as your nutritional needs. Things like how many carbohydrates you've got, fats, proteins, and your fluid levels are all tracked here on the watch screen. You can switch between several different ones by clicking the right stick in. And when you later acquire the map, it becomes essential to use those GPS coordinates. And it's one of the first games in a long time where a pen and paper in front of me has been really beneficial and marking the locations of my different bases. In terms of difficulty then, Green Hell is brutal. <laughs> It's more than likely that for your first three or four hours, you're going to die in numerous different ways. You might be walking through the undergrowth and a rattlesnake bites you on the ankle and you've not got the experience, the recipes or the capacity to deal with that injury and, well, you'll succumb to it. You might walk backwards off a cliff, falling, breaking both legs, pick up a cane toad that poisons you, get stabbed in the backside by a local. That totally happened to me. 
or just good old fashioned starving to death. Looking after yourself is really important in the game. And if you see a magnifying glass down the bottom of the screen, then that means there's something wrong with you. You can examine your body using this magnify symbol here, with your limbs having their own categories. You can check and rotate each arm and leg, and if for example you find a cut, graze, or some leeches, then over time you'll learn how to deal with them. Some will need bone needles to pop and then specially coated dressings to treat so they don't get infected. The leeches can be yanked off of your skin. And then there's burns, blisters, boils, filth, grime, lacerations, broken bones, among many hellish ways that you can injure and inevitably kill yourself. Now, if your statistics begin to drop too low or say you spend too long in the water or in the rain, you might develop a fever or you may eat something that gives you food poisoning. And nine times out of 10, the method with which you have used to get over these things in real life will apply to the game. For example, drink lots of water and get lots of rest will generally get rid of a fever and if you've got that food poisoning, don't eat any other food, just drink a ton of water and sleep. Base building is the next major part of the game, and you can build anything from a small shelter to large mud covered structures, which I'm not going to lie, I just haven't done. I tend to live in caves, but you'll need to build to be able to save. And again, that's where some players just may never reach the time where you can save the game because you've died too many times before then and you've just got frustrated. In terms of the controls, I found there were certain fiddly aspects, like the rotation of your limbs. It never felt quite right. You had to hold ZL and move the right stick and then to actually change the regions, use the left stick. And for whatever reason, my brain just couldn't quite get it every time. And when you're in a panic, say you've just been bitten by a scorpion and you've got to quickly craft something, not Having that mouse to move your cursor, it just doesn't feel quite as precise as it should. If they'd included an option for a gyroscopic mouse, I think that might have negated some of the finer details when navigating through your backpack. And that backpack is a core part of the game. You can move between the different sections of it with your tools hanging from the back, ingredients in one pocket, and then any food items in another. Most things that you discover in the world can be harvested for further materials. When you begin to get comfortable in your base area, you'll have planting boxes ready, you'll be growing your own crops and fighting off the locals. But then it will be time to venture out. And Green Hell really makes the player think as they would in real life. You'll be packing food or drying meat so that it lasts longer and heading out with enough supplies to build a campfire. But nine times out of 10, something will go wrong. Overall, Green Hell is most certainly not for everyone. If you're a fan of hardcore survival games, then this may well be the game you've been waiting for. Personally, I've had some of the most intense moments playing this, and that's exactly what I want in a title like this. It's a real shame that the Nintendo Switch doesn't include co-op mode, unlike the PC. I think having someone else along for the ride could be really fun. Overall, for me, I really love the game, but then I enjoy survival and I don't mind dying a lot. I think many players might find it just a bit too much. Still, what they're setting out to do was create a realistic and sensible survival experience that's true to life, and that's exactly what they've done. Gameplay scores 16 out of 20. In terms of the controls, they're just a touch too fiddly for me at times, and first person without gyro for precision can be a bit of a pain. Control score 14 out of 20. While a downgrade, obviously, from the PC version, visually Green Hell looks and performs pretty well. Frame rates tend to be at the 30s. There are a couple of dips when things get hectic, but when you're playing in handheld or on your screen, it generally feels okay. There's a little bit of aliasing going on in the backgrounds, but the scenes themselves are quite dense. Some of the weather effects are nice and overall lighting is good, with god rays shining down from the trees and a touch of bloom as well as light shifting when you move from a light to a dark area. There are some muddy textures here, no pun intended, but plants and shrubbery are all high enough quality that you can identify them just by sight as you become more accustomed to the game and those that inhabit it. Enemy tribes, people, they're not the best. Their movements are really erratic and strange and the animations of these just don't look right. In terms of audio, this is excellent.
Sounds of creatures in the darkness or the chanting of a tribesman in the distance are all excellently positioned and with a set of headphones on the game can be truly unnerving. Weather and environmental sounds are on point and the crack of thunder when you're out in the open and desperate for water can fill the player with elation. Visuals and performance score 17 out of 20. Audio scores an almost perfect 19 out of 20. For the survival enthusiast, the price of £22, or your regional equivalent, isn't a great deal to ask. Unfortunately, once again, the Switch has cuts. It's not up to the same version as the PC, and there's no co-op mode, which is a huge part of the experience. That being said, it offers more than enough for a solo experience, but if you have the option to pay less and get more, well, get it on PC. I give value 14 out of 20. Green Hell lives up to its name, and while it certainly doesn't avoid moments of pure frustration, they're juxtaposed with many of equal elation. It scores an overall switch-up score of 80%. Let me know in the comments if you're sadistic enough to play this one, or if you'll be sticking to uh, Mario. A big thanks to all of you who watched the content and enjoy the channel. If you didn't leave a comment on our last sales video, go and do that, because we've still got a couple of codes to give away. But so far this weekend, we've done three, which isn't too bad at all. Thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!